Marcus Ambrose comes to Martinsville after a top 10 finish at the Bristol Motor Speedway, also a two-time champion of the V8 Supercar Series in Australia. And Marcus Ambrose joining us here on a soggy set, but glad to have you here. Well, it's just great to be back on your show. It means I must have done something right. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I like about him? He's always smiling. Yeah. Now, I, it's hard not to smile, Daryl. Yeah, you always got job. that big smile on your That's face. Right. I like that. Well, but the thing is right now, he still appreciates what he's doing. I mean, this guy, I mean, think about where he's come from. I, I was reading the other night, and I, I need to know, where did you learn where did you pick up most of your skills from? I know you ran the Formula <laughs> Ford Thousand, you know, Formula One deal. Yeah, and I, you, you got your other series down in Australia. Which one of them seemed like you know helped you make the biggest? I mean, like all of us, really, I started in go karts, and I went to Europe and raced mm -hmm. open wheel for a while, and got whipped pretty good over there, and 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 came back to Australia, relaunched my career in sedan racing or uh, or touring car racing. We call it down home. It's our version of stock cars. I've just got a love for the sport. I love driving. I mean, I I, I drive a you know, when I was growing up, a bomb on the dirt road, mucking around in the in, in the paddocks on the farms. You know, I just like driving, and I've been lucky enough to uh, to rely on my instincts and reactions, and and somehow I've been blessed with the ability to drive a race car um, to some degree but, to, but, to get paid for it. But you said you got your butt kicked over in in, in Europe. I mean, but I, you did pretty well over there. Well, yeah, we won we won a European Championship yeah. here in Formula 4. I mean, how can you get your butt kicked when you won the championship? Well, because I didn't last, did I? <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I, I either no ran legs. out of money, no talent, legs. or time. I couldn't work out which which came first. But I, I, I realized very quickly over there that it wasn't for me. You know, the okay. open wheel scene, it's very restrictive, very elite. Only a few get through, uh, much less than American racing. I mean, you might start off with a 1,000 drivers in the junior categories, and you've got to work your way into Formula One, and you might only have one or two seats available any one year. So I just knew it just wasn't for me eventually. And I, before it was too late, I made the switch back to sedan racing or or, or uh, touring car racing, tin top we call them down home, tin tops. <laughs> and, uh, and and the car suited me. I mean, I like the horsepower. I like to drive off the throttle pedal. I like the big heavy cars that don't handle so well. So I thought NASCAR was for me. But I didn't realise how bad they really did handle until I got here. And then I, I realised it was going to be a lot of hard work. But I, I'm only into my fourth season in, in NASCAR. So I'm still fairly new at this. And I'm, I'm feeling every race more comfortable, more confident. And just learning what I need. I mean, these cars are so particular. They've got a lot of power. They don't handle very well. And you've got to forget about most of what's happening out there and focus on the stuff that really makes a difference over a 500-mile race. You know, it's raining. And the, when I think about you, <laughs> The kind of raindrops come to mind because uh, Cause watched Montreal. you at Montreal right. last year in the rain, you were phenomenal. Well, and uh, you really did a great job and you were able to win your first I, race. I was fortunate enough to have driven in the rain before and so I knew what to expect. So I'm telling the guys to work on stuff and we, we put so much of that uh, anti-fog on the screen on the front and the back. We got tried to get the windscreen wipers running at least to get something. Covered up all the dash to try and stop the water from getting in. All the little things that you learn through the years. But I've had races in the rain where I've passed four or five guys off the start line and didn't even know. I mean, the spray and everything, it, 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 it's quite alarming when you haven't done it before. So I used all those I instincts and experiences <laughs> quite from before and, <laughs> and, and somehow managed to get through. But I remember I was next to Scott Pruitt on there on the restart and, and we got going and I pulled next to him and I kind of look at his car and like, wherever he breaks, I'm going to go just that little bit further. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know, we didn't know what to do. I mean, we're, we're running side by side, not knowing who should slow down first. It was quite comical, really, when you look back at it, but there was a lot at stake, too. Did you have a windshield wiper? Because a lot of guys didn't. It, have. it worked up until about 60 miles an hour, and then it actually came off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm watching it. it, it it's, it's working, but it's about that far off the screen. <laughs> not working properly. Yeah. Marcos, you mentioned driving the sedan or the, or the touring cars over tin, in Australia and New tin Zealand. Tops. Tin, yeah, tops. Like tin tops. Tin uh, tops. Now, it's my understanding most of those were driven from the right side. Correct. Now, you made your debut right here in, in America in a NASCAR Camping World Truck Series in April 2006. You were a little nervous, a little <laughs> uptight. Little birdie told me when the track opened for practice, you actually put one leg over in the right side. Is there I, any I truth think, to that? I think an albatross could have told you <laughs> because that's exactly what happened. I got here, they parked the, the, the trucks in the front stretch with all the crowd there, and I'd never done a rolling start before. 
I'd never done a, a NASCAR introduction, so I was pretty fizzed up. <laughs> and, uh, and in Australia, we drive on the other side of the car. So I'm getting all ready, getting pretty G'd up, getting ready to go. I think he I wants put, to know what fizz does what, mean. What is fizz? <laughs> I was getting over it. You got to explain some of the stuff. I was, like a, I was like a, a can of soda pop. Oh, you're all fizzed up. Okay, well, go up. ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt, I but like I got to know. So, so go ahead. You and so then I got to put my left foot in the car on the wrong side. I was putting my leg on the, on, in the right-hand side of the car. And as I get my head down in there, I realize there's no steering wheel. <laughs> it's just all the electronics. Now I heard you, you downplayed it. You said I, I was just stretching a little bit. So then I just kicked into overdrive and I stretched the leg out and I did some twists and turns <laughs> <laughs> pretending I was having a stretch before I got in. Okay, let's make sure we got this straight, guys. We got a 10 top. Yeah. We got fizzed up. Fizzed yeah. up. And a lot of people may have not have caught this, but he said screen. He was talking about the windshield. The folks. windshield. The windshield I'm wiper sorry. was away from the windshield itself. And they, down there, they call it the windscreen. <laughs> we so I just want to make, sure, just wanna make yeah. sure I got that straight before we, need, we go to break. Yeah. I mean, we just, I don't we just need confused. you to come around. We just need you to yeah. come around more often. I'm, I'm writing this stuff down. I'm going to write a book. We also <laughs> run, instead of the hood, it's called the bonnet. The, the bonnet. bonnet. I don't know why. It's a very good question why we call it a bonnet. I just don't know. Well, and the back is called... Uh, the boot. The boot. That's where yeah. you put your dirty boots. Well, that's like Daryl when he was driving one time. He was driving for, for a European group, and they said something about uh, the, the torch. The torch. Yeah. Daryl said, I ain't riding around with no torch I in my car. Him, we're having a driver debriefing. They said, now there's a torch to over on the right hand. I said, time out. I'm not driving any car with a torch tied in. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> you know, H Hammond's going to struggle with this book because he spelled tin and top wrong. Well, that's well, right. it's okay. As long as I understand it. I was in Atlanta last week on a TV show, and I spelt grits wrong. I spelled it with a Z. <laughs> did you have one grit or did you have a whole lot of them? I had I had grits that were sleeping or something, I guess. I put a Z, a Z's on it. Just give me one grit. And the rain can be alarming. Oh, alarming. Yeah. alarming. Is grit yeah. singular or plural? Yeah. Uh, that's plural. Oh, okay. Yeah, with a Z. Well, hey, to locate campgrounds near the Texas Motor Speedway, visit GoRVing.com. You'll also find virtual RV tours a free DVD offer, an RV dealer, and rental locations in your area. More Trackside here on Speed right after this.